Hey, it's Brett, the Out of Home Baker. Today I'm showing you how to do a paw print cake. I'm doing this one for a neighbor and I just thought it would be fun to show you my process, show you how I'm thinking about it. First off, when I was asked to do this cake design, I realized pretty quickly, I was like, how am I gonna get that paw print shape? Typically you'd go out and buy like the right shape of pan, like a Wilton paw print shape. But I was like, I'm not gonna buy one pan so I can do this one cake. I don't do paw print cakes often. So I'm gonna show you the template that I printed out and how I'm gonna cut it out. And we're gonna make a fun paw print cake for a birthday party. So I've got an eight inch cake here and you can see that I colored the batter. It's rainbow inside just to make it fun. We're gonna grab my knife so it's eight inch in diameter it's about two inches tall this is just one of those standard kind of wilton cake pans or fat daddios there's lots of different brands but you'll definitely want a cake pan that's got a nice sharp kind of corner to it you don't want like a pie pan that has those slanted edges i'm just gonna run my knife around the edge of this to kind of loosen it up from the pan don't cut into the cake. You just want to loosen those edges so that it'll pop out nice and clean. This was one batch of cake batter and it filled up my one eight inch pan. And we're going to be cutting it in half so it becomes a two layer cake. I'm just going to kind of shake it and you can see that the cake is wiggling. It's nice and loose. We, just, we want it loose. You can also tap it on your table to make sure that it's released from the bottom. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my hand on it. We're going to flip it and just release it from the pan. Now this cake has also been chilling in the fridge overnight. You want your cake to be totally cooled down before you flip it out of the pan or you might flip it and it'll fall apart because the crumb is still setting and those warm proteins and gluten structure is still like cooling down and it's still really pliable when it's warm. So you need your cake to be cool before you go popping it out like that. So I chilled this in the fridge overnight. I wanted it to be chilled so that I can cut my shape that I want to cut, but I definitely didn't want it frozen. Otherwise it would be really hard to cut through. So it's been in the fridge. We're going to use a leveler to level the top. I'm just going to adjust the setting so that it's at a nice height for this cake right about there. Now, if you've never used a leveler, this beauty of a tool is one of my favorite all time tools ever. It makes it so easy to get those nice flat tops and then you've got extra snack for yourself, for your kiddos, make cake trifles, cake pops, whatever you fancy to do with those extras. Now, like I said, I'm gonna cut this in half so that it actually becomes a two layer cake. So I'm just gonna adjust my leveler down to a lower setting, right about there. I'm gonna cut it just right in half. Nice and clean and super easy. So I've got this paw print that I just printed off from Canva and we're gonna use this to be our guide for cutting out the paw print shape of our cake. Got some scissors. And I actually want the shape, I want it to kind of have a bit of an outline because I plan on piping this. And so I need some space around it with the actual cake so that I can actually pipe inside the lines, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna cut. So I've got a nice outline around our paw print. Now we're just gonna lay it on the cake and that actually lined up really, really nice. We wanna cut away as minimal of the cake as possible. We don't wanna like waste and have scraps. So this is perfect size. You can link to this template if you just drop down into the video description, print one out, it's done for you. So got the paw print shape. Now we're just gonna take a knife and we're gonna cut around that paw print. And again, it's really helpful if your cake is chilled you don't want it frozen, it'll be really hard to cut through a frozen cake. But chilled cake is so much easier to work with and so much easier to cut through than a cake that's warm or even room temperature. Look how fun that is on the inside. So I just took parts of my vanilla batter and just dyed it pink, blue, yellow, and kind of swirled them, marbled them together for a fun rainbow look on the inside. What better for a kid's birthday party, right? Alright, so I'm just trimming the edges off. It's actually trimming really nicely. I'm feeling really good about it. Super 
super happy. And it's fun because do you ever have those cakes where you start off, like you've got this new idea, this new thing you're gonna try, and you start off and you're like, yeah, it's working, it's working. And then somewhere along the line, something happens and all of a sudden it all goes wrong. So we're gonna hope that that doesn't happen. But if that ever does happen to you, just know it happens to everybody. And just because somebody has done it for a long time doesn't mean they don't run into problems and trouble, especially when they're trying something new. And what I've learned over the years is that cake is actually pretty forgiving and you can find ways to disguise mistakes or workarounds and it's, it's fun and hard learning moments when things go wrong, but often we come out with the experience we need to continue going on, on our journey, to continue, you know, bettering our skills and, and doing better at the craft that we're trying to practice. So do not fret if things are hard the first time or if you're trying something new and it goes a little bit wrong. It's okay. All good learning experience. All right, voila. We have our beautiful paw print shaped cake layers. So we're gonna take these and we're gonna start putting them onto our turntable. So I've got my turntable right here. This is a cake board. I will admit this is one that I would not typically use. It's like one of those really cheap thin ones that just comes from Walmart. But because I'm just taking this over to my neighbor, we're gonna eat it really quick. It's not going to a customer. It's not, it doesn't have to survive for very long. So I'm just gonna use one of these that I found. Normally, when you're working with these cake boards, you want something that's very thick and sturdy. You can see how this, it's very pliable and it bows. And so when you have heavy cake on it, if you go to pick that up once it's decorated, it can bow and then you get your buttercream like doing funky things where it's all smooshed and it gets cracked and so that's part of what happens if you ever see cracks and bulges in your cake it could be because of a flimsy board so make sure you've got a nice sturdy board for now i'm just going to use this one but i wanted to make sure you knew about that all right i'm going to take that i've got my vanilla buttercream i am using american buttercream today you can use this meringue you can use italian meringue whatever it is that your preference is it always, to me, comes down to what my customers like is what I use. I've worked with all different types of buttercream and I stick with my American because that's what my particular customers like. And when it comes to taste in cake and taste in buttercream and frostings, it really is like art. And it's funny how we get into these battles over like what frosting is better because they can all do a really good job structure wise. And some are better than others for certain things, but for the most part, it comes down to that personal preference. Some people like it, some people don't. And my customers prefer the American, so I stick with it. So that's what I'm working with today is American buttercream. We are gonna stack these paw prints right there in the center. And I just put a little bit of buttercream on my board. You saw me just swipe a little. That's just to be some glue. It's kind of help hold this little cake in place. And then we're gonna Fill this with frosting. I'm gonna put a paper towel around the top of my bag. My hands start to get kind of oily and slippery from working with the cake. The paper towel helps me get a better grip on my piping bag. I'm gonna move this out of the way. Bring this to the center so you can see it a little bit better. Okay. We're gonna just pipe around the edge of this cake. I like to go around the edges first and it's okay if it overhangs a little bit. There you go. So piped around the edge. I'm just gonna fill it in. Just do a nice little swirl into the center. You can see that. <laughs> and we're gonna use our offset spatula to smooth that out. Now when it comes to smoothing this frosting, I like to start in the center and work out. You wanna make sure you have a good grip on your spatula. Don't hold it back here. You don't have a lot of control back here. This gets really long. Choke up on it and even put your finger up on the actual metal part of the spatula and that gives you a lot more control. Then there's two ways to use your spatula. You're either spreading or you're smoothing and like flattening. When you're spreading, like what we're about to do, you wanna use the very tip of your spatula. You're not gonna be at the side, you're not gonna be scraping. You're gonna be coaxing and moving and pushing the buttercream very gently and using just the tip of your spatula is really good for that. So I'm gonna start in the center and I just gently start to coax the buttercream out from the center. Buttercream likes to stick to buttercream. It doesn't really like to stick to cake as much as it does to buttercream. 
And that's because the fat and the oil base inside the buttercream is kind of repelled by the moisture inside the cake. And also the cake's a little bit crumbly. It's not much to stick to. But if you can just coax that buttercream out so that it sticks to the other bits of buttercream that you already piped, you'll have a good time getting it to just nicely spread even. And if you pull up a few crumbs, it's okay. Because this is the center part and no one's gonna see it. They're gonna cut it and it's gonna look crumbly anyways. So I'm just coaxing it and just filling in. I'm gonna take my spatula and instead of spreading, we want to smooth, we want to scrape. So I'm gonna turn my spatula so that it's parallel to the cake and I'm gonna let the turn table do the work. I'm gonna hold my hand steady and just turn and let it start to smooth and level out that buttercream. I'm scraping a little bit off as I go, keeping most of it on. We just wanna level it so that as we stack our cake, it goes up nice and straight. No Leaning Tower of Pizza happening. Did I say pizza or pizza? <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, we're gonna stack this one right on top. Let's see if we can remember which way it went. I believe it was just like that. Here we go, yeah. Okay, nice and straight. Mm, smells amazing, it smells so dang good. <laughs> part where I want to start eating the scraps. All right, now that we've got that layered, we're gonna do on this cake what's called a crumb coat. Some of you are familiar with that and you might not be. What happens in the crumb coat is we're gonna coat this in frosting and it's gonna get a little bit messy, especially because these layers are cold but they're not frozen. When you're making cake, if you want to, you could level those back when we cut the cake, we leveled it, We torted it where we cut it in half and we trimmed it you could wrap those in plastic wrap and you could stick them in the freezer and get them nice and frozen super cold because when they're frozen and cold they're so much more easy to work with they don't crumble quite as much and the buttercream sets really nice as you're working with it mine are cold but they're definitely not frozen so they're going to be a little more crumbly a little trickier to work with but at home if you're following along you can definitely do that step when you're cutting those layers, wrap them up, stick them in the freezer, get them super chilled. And that is the key for easy cake decorating. But we are on a time crunch today, so we're just gonna go straight here with our soft cake. And I'm just gonna be as gentle as I can. Again, it's okay if it's messy. That's why it's called the crumb coat. It's supposed to be messy. If we end up looking like rainbow cookies and cream here, that is totally fine. So I just piped along the top into the center and we're gonna spread that again. But before I spread it, I'm gonna go along the very bottom edge. I like to start on the bottom and just kind of seal the gap between the cake and the board. And then I like to go along the top edge as well because top edges are tricky to frost. So if we can just pipe the frosting right onto that top edge, ooh, it makes it so much easier. Going around, cool. And then we've got a little bit in the center already. I'm just gonna do one more stripe of buttercream around the outside there. Perfect. And now we've got plenty to cover the whole cake. I'm gonna be spreading again, just using the tip, being super gentle as I coax it out because I don't wanna rip up too many crumbs. I don't wanna rip the whole cake up. I'm just gently coaxing buttercream out so that it connects with the rest of the buttercream. Slowly covering all of those little gaps and it's okay if it does look messy and it's okay if if it doesn't look like mine if yours is messier than mine that's okay it really is um once you've done it for a while your crumb coat gets a little cleaner and cleaner but starting out it's it's hard to get that technique cake decorating is a lot of muscle memory and it's funny because i feel like we treat it as if you, when you walk up to do it the first time if it's not a success, we're like, oh, I just can't do that. I just can't decorate a cake. Like, I tried. But do we ever treat anything else like that? Like, if you sat down to play the piano for the first time, and it didn't, it, you can't play anything, and you're like, oh, I just can't play the piano. Like, I tried once, and it didn't work. No, you never say that. And so, cake's the same way. It takes practice. It takes muscle memory. Your arms, learn the way it feels when the buttercream moves and the way that you need to move in order to get it to do what you want. So now I'm just going along the side and I'm just gently spreading 
the buttercream so that it covers all of the side bits. And then we'll use our scraper to actually scrape and smooth it. So just going around the whole cake. It's good to scrape off your buttercream as you go. Like I said, buttercream likes to stick to buttercream. So if you've got big globs kind of piling up on your spatula, you want to scrape it off so that it doesn't rip up buttercream as you go. Just gently working my way around the cake, moving the buttercream, gently pushing it. Now that we have kind of spread it around the whole cake, I'm going to use my scraper and I'm going to very gently kind of follow those curves and smooth it out a little bit. It doesn't have to look perfect because we are going to do a final coat on this, but we want to get it as good as we can. If we can get it as straight and as smooth as we can, that will give us a really good base to start our final coat with. So I'm just going to very gently start to press up against this, scraping off a little bit of buttercream as I go. I'm going to move gently around all those curves, scraping that off as I go. Don't let it pile up on here. And I'm going to just keep ripping buttercream off. Ooh, it's so satisfying. I love it. I love the way it feels. Honestly, this is why I would choose to work with buttercream over fondant. It's just my own personal preference of the way it feels to work with buttercream. I love the satisfaction of that process. So I'm just scraping gently around. This is also a good moment to get level with your cake and make sure you're not getting any like volcano edges or like base edges. You want to make sure your scraper is straight up and down so that you get those nice straight sides. So I'm going to get level with it and I'm going to make sure that nothing funky is going on down here. So if you can see right here, there's like this little kind of pocket where the buttercream didn't stick or didn't have enough. So I'm just going to take a little bit of what I've already scraped off and I'm just going to fill in that hole gently and any other holes like that, I'm just going to put some buttercream over that and then go over it one more time with my scraper. Now before I stick this in the freezer to chill, because we want to chill it before we do our final coat, what will happen is the buttercream will get really cold and it will get hard and easy to handle. So we can do that smooth coat. The crumbs will be trapped in this crumb coat and we can do that smooth final coat. But before we chill it in the freezer, we got to get take care of these little bits that are hanging off the top. So I'm just going to wipe my spatula clean. Clean spatulas are good to work with. Make sure you keep it clean while you work. And now I'm going to turn it so it's parallel again. I'm just going to gently catch those edges. Again, this is one of those things that takes just a little bit of practice, a little bit of muscle memory, a little bit of just doing it a million times before you become a natural at it. And it's funny because people will tell me all the time, they're like, oh, you're so talented. And I'm like, ha, huh, if you might mean by talented, like freaking determined, because <laughs> my first cakes did not look like this. And the first time I tried it did not look like this. And so I just, I feel like talent is really just the result of so much hard work and time and practice. So I just brought in those edges. And now we've got a nice, good base for our final coat. So I'm gonna put this into the freezer. We're gonna chill it for about 10 to 15 minutes until you can touch it and it's not sticky anymore. It like feels hard. So it's going in the freezer and then we'll pop it out with the final coat and we'll do the decorating. Just took the chilled cake out of the freezer. We're ready to do the final coat. I'm going to clean up the board just a little bit, just scrape off some of that buttercream that got a little bit smeared and clean it up a little bit before we get started on this final coat. Okay, as we do this final coat, you want to make sure your tools are clean, so your scraper is washed. Got a little buttercream left on there, but that's okay. As we get started, you want to make sure you've wiped off your spatula, that your space is clean, because now we don't want the crumbs getting into this final coat. So working with some clean tools and a clean space is a good idea. Again, I'm just going to start by piping along the top. That's just where I like to start. 
and then into the middle. And I'm gonna be a little more generous with my buttercream this time during the crumb coat. I'm skimpy because we don't really need to cover the whole thing. But at this point we do, we want every little part to be covered. So I'm just going around with my piping bag and I'm gonna pipe all the crossing I can. Just fill in all the gaps. And then we'll spread it out over the spatula. So I just like to start on the top and again, just kind of gently coaxing using the tip of your spatula. And now I'm going to just scrape it flat, start to kind of smooth it. And I'm going to go around the sides like I did before, just gently connecting that buttercream, covering those gaps, filling it all in. I'm gonna use my scraper and I'm gonna gently go around those edges. I don't wanna to pull too much buttercream off. I want it to stay on. We just want it to get nice and smooth. Do a couple passes to make sure I get the shape. I'm gonna fill in some of those little gaps again. And anywhere you can start to see the cake peeking through, you can add a little bit more frosting right there. Gently scraping again and just shaping it. Now, if this is tricky, if it's hard to get those smooth edges and those straight sides, number one, don't worry. As you practice, you'll get better at it. Number two, keeping your cake as cold as possible is definitely clutch here. If you're having trouble getting those smooth sides and if your frosting is just kind of falling off, try putting your cake back in the freezer. Let it set, let it get real cold, and then come back at it. It's like you're doing a sculpture. It's like you're adding buttercream, taking it away, you're really sculpting, kind of molding this cake. And keeping it cold is the most important thing you can do in order to make sure you get smooth sides and those straight edges that you want. Okay, so now that our cake is nice and chilled and we'll be able to work with it, we're gonna use our paw print template to figure out where we're gonna pipe the black parts. So I'm just gonna line this back up if I can remember which way it went, there we go. And I don't wanna get any crumbs on the cake. But mostly what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna take a toothpick and you could cut out each piece and trace it. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I just kinda wanna see where it goes. And I'm just gonna kinda start to trace with my toothpick. So that when I go to pipe, I've got a bit of a guide to follow and it's not just, you know, guessing and winging it. Okay, now I've got some guidelines that I can follow. While my cake was chilling, I mixed up some of my extra vanilla with a little bit of Americolor black gel. And I've got this nice black that I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna pipe the outline of these shapes, then fill them in. And then I'm gonna use my spatula to carefully smooth the top so that we get a nice smooth look, almost as if we made it with fondant, but it's buttercream. It's at the shop. I took it to get an oil change. Yeah. Just a big old. We can go get it in a sec. Yeah. I'm sure you did.
sorry about the pen. <laughs> I also have had them check the heater, and they said it's a computer problem, and it'll be different to the dealer. Yeah. The computer, not the, not the little thing. It's an electrical issue, and he thinks that's why the check engine light's coming on too. He thinks it's all the same problem. We need to take up the to get a key, yeah. Uh, Now that I've piped in the black, I'm gonna take the spatula and I'm just gonna gently smooth it out. If your cake is really cold, then this black should be starting to set a little bit, which is good. It makes it a lot easier to smooth. If your cake is getting warm, you can go ahead and pop it back in the freezer and you can chill it a little bit. If you really wanna get these little parts smooth, then yes, go ahead and put them in the freezer and then it'll be so much easier to smooth. But I'm just gonna go from here, just gently nudging it around, smoothing it out. And if you, if you have any mess ups, if it goes in the wrong spot, you can just use a toothpick, gently scrape it off. And if it, if it leaves any smears, again, just put it in the freezer and keep scraping it off and you can, you can fix just about anything. Check that out, it's beautiful. I'm so happy with that. Now, one more thing I'm gonna add is the little boy whose birthday it is really wanted a splash of rainbow on the outside. And so I mixed up some colors. I've got pink and blue and green and yellow, just a nice basic rainbow. And what I did is I took each one, wrapped it in plastic wrap, and then I cut them. So now they're all cut. And I'm just gonna shove them into a piping bag and I've got a number 32 tip in there. And we're gonna use this tip to just make a nice shell border around the edge. We'll add some sprinkles and then this beautiful little cake will be ready to go. Last but not least, I have a couple of fun sprinkles. I'm just gonna put those around this side just to give it another fun birthday splash and then we'll be all, all done. is all done. Beautiful sprinkles on this stuff. So there you go. That's a super easy way to make a beautiful, fun paw print cake for birthday. And I'm so glad you joined. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned a lot, please like and subscribe to my channel, The Out of Home Baker. And if you're someone who wants to make this baking thing maybe a little bit more than just a hobby, and you're thinking about starting a business, I'm your girl for learning how to do that. You can link to my resource library on how to start a home baking business from home. It's in the video description. If you wanna check out my resources about how to price your cakes, how to get clients, how to legally start as a business, I've got so many different ways to learn. Go ahead and check that out in the video description and I will see you next time.